excited about the big unveiling today? Yes, yeah, very excited actually. It's, um, it's the right time, I think, now to do it. Uh, the maquettes <coughs> uh, has, has created and captured the composition that we wanted to get. And uh, now it's the beginning of the making of the big sculpture. And we can uh, photograph that safely as we're, uh, as we're creating the clay work. A lot of thought has gone into it, obviously. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, it's a lovely process because as the, uh, the process moves from the design concept uh, through to the maquette and then through to the big one, it changes and evolves as it works. So new ideas start to evolve and, it, and there's subtle changes. The design will stay as it is, but um, the actual piece will have little bits of iconography in it, little secrets in it that will intrigue and fascinate people and also draw people back because uh, there's too much to see and take in in one go. Can you talk us through it a little bit? Yes, I certainly can. Um, what we wanted to do was capture David in the period that he was when he appeared here in Aylesbury and he created Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders from Mars here which is a, a big deal really. But in doing so, we've got, in effect, a tribute sculpture. And we can then represent David's whole life, because this is a one-off piece. So what we've got as the main focus for the sculpture is the Ziggy Stardust figure himself. Leaping in the air, I wanted to create something that was unusual, something that's totally different from everybody else. And uh, this represented that. I didn't want a figure standing with a microphone. It, from a distance that looks like a busker and everybody's got that so it had to be something different. Looking at that figure from the future is David in his mid-40s in the blue suit tour and again I think he was at his most handsome there so it helps the sculpture come together as a beautiful design. And then behind the sculpture itself is a, a montage of uh, reliefs really that represent David's different incarnations, because he was constantly reinventing himself and that mercurial quality to him uh, was just too good an opportunity to miss. So it goes roughly in a kind of timeline running from the bottom of the sculpture to the top. Um, we have the spider representing the spiders of Mars. That's what David Bowie looked like when he was singing Space Oddity. There's Major Tom sitting in his spacecraft, um, long since deceased actually, with the, the Earth and the Moon out of reach. This is what he looked like when he sang Life on Mars, and he, we're using a little bit of iconography here, this is Mars, and the lyrics from the song go, the girl with the mousy hair was hooked to the silver screen, and there's the little girl with mousy hair. In fact, she was a teenager, so again, this will be changed slightly as the, as the whole project evolves. Here's Ziggy again, looking down at his next incarnation, which was Aladdin Sane, the iconographic lightning strike across his face. And then moving up, and what, what's happening here is we're moving up through generations, because I know that my PA, for example, who is 27, loves Labyrinth, and that's her thing. And so uh, you find that people from different generations uh, relate to David in different ways. So the uh, labyrinth figure, the Goblin King, is very important. Also, it was another part of David's whole career where he was not just a singer, but an actor as well. Here's the clown Perro from Ashes to Ashes. <clears throat> and again, they're singing about Major Tom. So that, that space theme has run through the whole of David's career from the beginning to the end, really. So that ties the composition of the sculpture beautifully together, creating this story that makes total sense. This is uh, from the face from the uh, alien that he played in um, The Man That Fell to Earth. This is the Thin White Duke. This is from the Blue Suit Tour. And tied into that is the Lazarus Rocket, really, that uh, he, uh, which was the play he created at the end of his life. Uh, that that ties in with the man that fell to earth, trying to get back to the stars again, the Starman theme. And above that is the Black Star uh, album and his image from the videos from that. And this is what he looked like just before um, he got cancer. So um, it, it, again, he's still looking a very handsome man, I think. And then to tie the whole composition together, because it has to balance beautifully, 
is this gold disc with some of his album covers on the disc itself. Again, because it makes people think, oh yeah, look, I had that album. And again, it, it, it relates to people and makes them feel like they have ownership of the sculpture itself. There'll be something in here for everybody. Even if you don't like figurative art, there's something here for everybody. And then the final element, the fifth element down at the bottom is a bronze um, sort of plaque really at the bottom that, that everything stands upon. And on that will be David's uh, star sign and one or two other things that I haven't thought of yet, probably. So a little bit of work to be done, but you're, you're Just extremely bit. pleased Just to bit. see it get yes. to this phase. Yes, yes. And uh, at the moment we're on schedule, so everything's working out nicely. Uh, and I think this is the sort of fun part, really, where it becomes a finalised design rather than still, still in a kind of concept stage.